The Detroit Lions are coming to town looking to right the ship and the New Orleans Saints are looking to change course. Can they get it done with a big time upset? We'll see. We got all that and a little bit of land yet for you on today's episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody, and welcome in to this Crossover Thursday episode, Locked on Lions and Locked on Saints here as a part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day, your daily podcast, breaking down the Detroit Lions and the New Orleans Saints. We appreciate all you everydayers out there making Locked on Lions and Locked on Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget, you can subscribe and follow always for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss the latest episodes each and every day. And on this crossover Thursday, we've got Matt Derry, the one, the only, the legend at Derry Speaks on your favorite social media, host of the Locked on Lions podcast, and myself, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson Nola, host of the Locked on Saints podcast, here to break down everything you need to know about this Lions and New Orleans Saints matchup. We're going to be taking a look at what it is that each of these teams needs to do to get a win, the matchups that can shake this matchup. But of course, first and foremost, it's the biggest story of the day and the biggest story for these two teams before they square off on Sunday. So Matt, what's the biggest story for these Detroit Lions as they head to the Big East? Well, first off, Ross, you're a legend yourself. Uh, <laughs> always talk about you and what you do for the network and uh, love seeing you. I mean, the, the bottom line with the Lions is just sort of the, the, this this bouncing back, as you put up on, on YouTube here, writing the ship a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because even after a loss to the Packers on Thanksgiving, which in the past had been the norm for this operation for, you know, mm -hmm. decades, mm -hmm. uh, they uh, the, the fan base is like, whoa, I mean, they've gotten exposed the last three weeks defensively. So getting back to getting some stops and winning a football game against a team that, quite honestly, uh, they should beat. And I'm not saying handily, but just last couple of weeks, Lions were favored against the Chargers on the road, had to eke it out. Same with the Bears at home had to, had to really squeak that one out. And then this past uh, Thursday, they kind of got their, their comeuppance from the Packers. So just sort of bounce back and, and, and play a solid 60 minutes, I think is, is the storyline. What about you? Yeah, I think when it comes to the New Orleans Saints, while the, while the Detroit Lions are looking to right the ship, I think the New Orleans Saints are looking to change course entirely. And I think that that's the big key for them. Derek Carr, this New Orleans Saints offense have been nothing short of disappointing so far this year. And the defense has been very disappointing so far this year. They just surrendered uh, over 200 rushing yards to the Atlanta Falcons. It's the third time in a row that the Saints and Falcons have faced off and New Orleans has surrendered over 200 rushing yards to mm -hmm. Atlanta. Um, it, it's just not the team that it used to be here in New Orleans. And, and on top of that, so far, it hasn't really been a fieldable product of consistency at all, right? Like no one should expect this New Orleans Saints team to replicate with Dennis Allen and Derek Carr what it once was with Sean Payton and Drew Brees. But everything that was sort of sold by this organization led you to believe that this was going to be a 10-win team at the very least and a playoff team uh, going into this year so far, 12 weeks through the season. They don't look like that at all. Um, and sometimes they do, sometimes they haven't. But that inconsistency has been the story so far for New Orleans for the past two seasons, I'd say. Could, could this be a situation, Ross, and I mentioned this earlier in the week on my show, mm -hmm. where the Lions go in there and, and win, and let's say there's the Boo Birds, let's say there's the three and outs, the Derek Carr fumbles, and Dennis Allen is out on Monday? Is that possible? I don't think he would be out on Monday, but I do think that, like, look, if Detroit walks into New Orleans and handily takes care of the New Orleans Saints, then I think that it, you know those, the chatter starts to get a little bit louder the seat starts to get a little bit hotter. And in New Orleans Saints, especially if you pair that loss with an Atlanta Falcons win this weekend, which they have a winnable game, and all of a sudden you go from being alone in first place in your division to surrendering to the team that you just <laughs> surrendering first place in the division to the team you just got trounced by, then I think that like that puts them in a really, really tough position uh, going into the, the next five games after that. So uh, I don't see this Saints organization being one that's willing to make an in-season move, but certainly it does raise the chatter and give a little bit of fodder for that conversation once they hit the Monday after week 18. I think that's a date that you're looking at for not only Dennis Allen, but also Pete Carmichael, if they end up dropping this game uh, in humiliating fashion with a lot of eyes on it. This is effectively a national game. Like the, the almost the entire map is getting this one. 
and and Matt, I, I imagine <laughs> that there's that there's some that there's a little bit of let's say motivation for this Detroit Lions coaching staff with a lot of former New Orleans uh, teams that they 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 they'd like to win here in New Orleans. I imagine. Oh, I, no question about it. I mean, obviously the Jamal Williams angle should be interesting. Uh, yep. The Lion d- d- defensive guys, all everybody loved him, but the defensive guys would like to get some licks in for sure. And then you're right, Dan mm-hmm. Campbell and Aaron Glenn kind of coming back. Anzalone coming back too. It's unfortunate he's not going to play. Uh, he's yeah. got a hand injury and it's going to be a couple of weeks. He has actually had a really, really good year. Uh, when when they brought awesome. him in, in, yeah, 2021 when he was here, I said, "What? this is a one-year stopgap. He's not very good. Resigned him again. He had a really solid year last year, still unspectacular, but they gave him a multi year deal here. And he's one of the leaders, captain of the defense, and uh, would have been a nice motivator, I think, for him to go back to New Orleans. Not that, that there was any bad blood. He's a great dude. Yeah. Uh, and, and probably would never, even if he had bad blood, say anything. But you're right. I, I think there is a little bit to Dan Campbell going back to New Orleans, where he was an assistant for so many years and kind of, you know, showing the home crowd there what, what he's doing with this program. Yeah. It's been. It's been good, um, but again, we're almost spoiled up here now because it was an eight and two team. Ah, they'll take care of the Packers on Thanksgiving Day, and now, not panic, but they've got to start getting some stops. The, the defense has not played well. Yeah, yeah. Before we get to matchups and things like that, is there a little bit of concern about this being a? Gosh, I used to never talk about the New Orleans Saints this way, but is there a little bit of concern about this being a trap game, if you will, quote unquote, for the Lions? No, I, I don't think so, because I think they've got the Bears next week. Uh, they know they can win that game and play better against Chicago than they did two weeks earlier mm-hmm. uh, at Ford Field. So I don't I don't think so. I, I think okay. they'll be very focused for this. And some of the familiarity will help. Yeah. And I, you know, I think they'll win. But again, we'll get to that later. But I, I you know, the, the thing that scares me is what you said about the Saints. I mean, the, the last two weeks have been so bad. They, they they can't play this poorly, can they? I mean, Peter King had him winning what 10, 11, 12 games. Yeah. There's some talent there, but I know you'll 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 tell us later. I mean, a lot of injuries about going on down there, right? Yeah, a lot of injuries, a lot going on there. And and even before the injuries, it was it's just been disappointing at, you know, apropos the the expectations. But but the thing that I, I really take away from the idea of this not being looked at as a trap game by the Detroit Lions or by the Detroit Lions fan base is that that means there's still a little bit of respect there for what the New Orleans Saints can do when they are operating. The biggest issue is that they've been inconsistent in their operation. So hopefully they can kind of play up to that a little bit and and maybe reach a a little bit of a better, uh, let's call it competitive vibe that we've been able to see from them here recently. The Saints have played two teams so far this year that have winning records and have led for zero seconds in either of those games. And it's only two. It's only two games. So, um, you know, that's one of those things. It was the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Minnesota Vikings. So that's one of the things that you're watching going into this one for sure. So, Matt, let's take a look at the matchups next that can end up deciding this game because I think there's one key piece for the New Orleans Saints defense that they haven't gotten right so far consistently this season that Detroit might be a good matchup for, but we'll see how it all works out. We got that coming up for you as we continue on with this crossover Thursday edition of Locked on Lions and Locked on Saints. Here's a part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the easiest and most fun way to play daily fantasy sports. And it just got even more fun with their specials deals, where now you can actually go in and combine different bets across uh, the, the different sports. So you might have, you know, a projection for you know, uh, Travis Kelsey and Aaron Rodgers, or excuse me, not Aaron Rodgers, uh, LeBron James, right? Across different sports there, basketball and football. Put those together, 10 and a half, threes made, but also receptions, right? Combined. And if you get that, then boom, you win. It's that cool. It's that easy. It's that awesome. I just think that's such a cool and fun feature uh, that they have added. But basically, it's super simple. You pick two to six players. You choose whether or not they're going to come in at more or less than their prize picks projections. You get those right. You go up to 25 times your entry back so go and check them out today prizepicks.com slash locked on nfl use the promo code locked on nfl in all lowercase as well so you can get a first deposit match up to 100 dollars. once again that is prizepicks.com slash locked on nfl promo code locked on nfl for that first deposit match up to 100 dollars. prize picks daily fantasy made easy all right y'all continuing on with today's episode this crossover thursday edition locked on lions Matt Derry here with us, as well as Locked on Saints, Ross Jackson here 
uh, get breaking it all down. Appreciate all the everydayers here making Locked On Lions and Locked On Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget to go and check out the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 stream, the nation's first sports YouTube 24-7 stream available. Be a part of history. Go subscribe to Locked On Sports Today today. Uh, Matt, big matchups that can decide this game. When you think about that, where's the first matchup that you're going to be paying attention to? Like I, like I said earlier, Ross, I watched a lot of your game last week, and mm-hmm. the Lions, when they've won on the road, they've really done a great job of establishing the run, punching the other team in the mouth, and, and going you know big with David Montgomery inside, and then Jameer Gibbs on the outside. So mm-hmm. like you said earlier, Falcons ran all over the Saints last week, so why wouldn't the Lions, especially with Jared Goff not playing his best football right now, mm-hmm. that O-line, D-line matchup, Montgomery and Gibbs against the Saints linebackers, why not just try to punish New Orleans, keep the Saints off yep. the tough field, and run the football and try to do what the Falcons, uh, you know, did last week with Bijan and Algiers and those guys. So that that to me is the biggest matchup right now is can the Lions do what the Falcons did last week, take a page out of Atlanta and, and Arthur Smith's playbook and and run the football right down the Saints' throats. Yeah, and and look, you look at the past. Let's look at the last four games for the New Orleans Saints: two hundred and twenty-eight. 125, 156, 164, all when it comes to uh, rushing yards or rushing uh, touch or rushing yards surrendered uh, by the defense. So, like, they've been susceptible. It's not just one game uh, either, right? This most recent one, it, they have just simply been susceptible to the run, which is such a surprise because that didn't used to be the case for this New Orleans Saints team. The, the ability to stop the run, they were perpetually a top five, top three run defense. They just haven't been that so far this year and i'll tell you what if that happens matt if they come out detroit and they're able to run the ball like that that immediately takes my matchup that i i would like to see go well for the saints out of the game because it's going to take detroit away from relying on their passing game but if new orleans can stand up a little bit to this detroit lions run game or at least make good on their opportunities on third and longs the matchup that i'm very much watching here is going to be carl granderson taylor decker over on that left side the blind side of uh of Jared Goff. The New Orleans Saints have struggled to put sacks together this year, 18 sacks so far on the season, even more pitifully low than I know a, a number that's been disappointing in Detroit. What, 24 sacks so far in Detroit, if I remember correctly? Something uh, like that. 24, yeah, 20, 20 something. But, 28, but still, 20, but still even not more, enough. 10 more, 10 more than what the New Orleans Saints have. Yeah. But I know that that ranks like pretty much beyond the first half of the, uh, of the NFL. And there's the Saints sitting much lower than that, right? 10 sacks fewer. So there's a couple of reasons for that. One of the things is that they've struggled to get to the quarterback. They have one of the lowest pressure rates in the NFL. They have one of the lowest pressure to sack conversion rates in the NFL as well. So they're getting, even when they get to the quarterback, they don't make the play at the quarterback. Quarterback's able to scramble, move around, stuff like that. Jared Goff, not the least fleet of foot, but certainly not the most mobile guy in the NFL. Uh, And so... (laughs) Getting, it's been a it's been a change for the New Orleans Saints. They used to face only three or four of them of mobile quarterbacks every year because they had a division of statuesque quarterbacks that just stood there and, and delivered passes, Matt Ryan, Tom Brady, so on and so forth. Now that's changed. And so this is one of the few non-mobile quarterbacks the Saints will be facing. Carl Granderson's the guy that's gotten the most consistent pass rush so far this season. If he's able to get to Jared Goff, he also does a very good job of knocking the ball out, creating some turnovers and opportunities for that New Orleans Saints defense, which has been an opportunistic defense so far this year. If he can win that matchup and take advantage of it when Jared Goff does have to drop back to pass, I think that could put the New Orleans Saints in position to at least challenge for that upset. Well, the last name Granderson is very popular in Detroit for uh, the old Curtis Granderson Fair. fans with the Tigers. Yes, uh, yes. That made me think of that. <laughs> Other side, same type of thing. The, the opposite edge of Aiden Hutchinson, guys like Charles Harris, the mm-hmm. O'Quara brothers, Kaminsky, Pascal. Those are names you have not heard because basically they just bull rush, get in there, and there's their, their name. You want their names called. You want to hear pressures. You want yeah. to hear some sacks and, and you know a tip pass, something. So watch that as well for the Lions as, as a matchup. The other edge rushers, not named Aiden Hutchinson, can they get home on Sunday? And also Kamara versus Jack Campbell. Yeah, this Anzal, is my next Anzal one too. not going to play. Alan Kamara is damn good coming out of the backfield, and Jack Campbell is a rookie linebacker that you're asking at times to get matched up with, with, uh, with Kamara. That could be that could be troublesome for the Lions. And I know that he's one of the only healthy bodies right now when it comes to targets. Right? 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. Michael Thomas is on injured reserve for at least another three weeks, including this game against Detroit. Um, Rashid Shahid's not going to be available this week. Uh, Chris Olave, the, the second-year wide receiver who was fantastic his rookie season, has had some ups and downs so far this year. He had, went into concussion protocol after putting up 114 receiving yards against the uh, Atlanta Falcons last week. He was limited at practice. He was out there today. We saw him, but or we saw him on Wednesday. Uh, I don't know if that's going to if he's going to make it through. And, and what we know too is that not a lot of players make it through concussion protocol in just one week. Derek Carr made it one game to the next game, but because they had the bye week in between. Uh, and when players do come back, Alexander Madison, Brock Purdy, for instance, within a week or one week of their of going into concussion protocol, they tend to not perform well uh, when they first come out. So I think Alvin Kamara has to be a big part of their game plan. And I think Taysom Hill, again, has to be a big part of their game yeah, plan, yeah. especially in the red zone, especially in the red zone. The Saints got into scoring position seven times within the 35. They got into the red zone 19 or closer uh, five times and walked away with nothing but field goals, a couple of interceptions. They gave more points to uh, Jesse Bates than they gave to themselves when they were in the red zone. And so that's got to be a big part of their game plan, I imagine. And if Alex Angeloni is not going to be playing, then this is a prime opportunity to be able to get sort of that you know, Joker roll back in Alvin Kamara's wheelhouse where he's running those wheel routes, where he's running those option routes, where he's uh, impactful in the passing game as well as in the running game and all that. And Taysom Hill's got to help out there too, I imagine. Yeah, and that's been an issue for the Lions. You know, uh, Justin Fields two weeks ago, Herbert three weeks ago, not so much with George. Jordan Love is basically just sitting in the pocket uh, eating a sandwich and drinking coffee last week. <laughs> but if if the Saints were smart, I'd start off in Wildcat with Taysom, you know, a couple of mm -hmm. tight ends, maybe 12 personnel, and let's roll. Because the Lions yep. have had a hard time stopping uh, you know, quarterbacks that move. And you and I saw each other in Indianapolis for that Colt Saints game. They mm -hmm. used him very well in the red yep. zone against Indy that day. So expect I would expect the Saints to have that in the game plan and go to it. Yeah, yeah, that's got to be a, a, a big-time part of their game plan for sure. Taysom, it's such an interesting sort of formula for the New Orleans Saints. They, they, they tend to find out that Taysom Hill works as opposed to trust that Taysom Hill works. Like they'll, they'll have a game like that game against the Colts and then just kind of go away from them for a couple of games. And then yeah. they rediscover like, oh, this works. And then they kind of go away from it. And, and I think that like in some cases, there's maybe a little bit of a like, well, there's a lot of money invested in Derek Carr. Don't want to take Derek Carr off the field, Good put point. Taysom Hill on yeah. the field, things like that. But I think you got to get past that. I mean, you this win. Is, yeah, this is <laughs> this is the NFL. Like, all you need to do is focus on winning games. You don't need to be focused on people's feelings in, in yeah. the process. And so, I do think that leaning more on Taysom Hill over the course of the last six games of the season is what will probably give them the best outcome. Doesn't mean that you take Derek Carr off the field for in between the twenties or even every single snap in the red zone. You don't have to make him useless by any means. But I do think that when there are situations where you know Taysom Hill can work. Roll with Taysom Hill and let it work. All, all you need, Ross, right, is a one-game win streak in the NFC South, and you can win the division. <laughs> That's all it takes, man. It's all it takes. Somebody's got to win this dang thing. Otherwise, they're oh, going to have to man. put another AFC team over here in this bracket. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, coming up next, we're going to take a look at what it is that the New Orleans Saints and the Detroit Lions need to do in order to get a win in this game. And unsurprisingly, a lot of this comes down to protecting the ball. Who's done it well? Who hasn't? And who'll do it better and who won't? We got that coming up for you as we continue on and wrap up this crossover Thursday edition of Locked on Lions, Locked on Saints, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode of Locked on Saints is brought to you by our friends over at DoorDash. Listen, I live on the DoorDash app. I'm probably on DoorDash more than I'm on Twitter now. I'm on DoorDash looking at restaurants to see if there's something I haven't heard of before. I'm looking on DoorDash to see what I am going to order, what I might order for next week. There's a whole bunch of stuff that I'm doing over there because I loves me some DoorDash and I loves me some food. And if you're somebody that likes local spots and being able to support local businesses, then absolutely DoorDash is a spot for you. They've got a whole section for local spots wherever you are here in New Orleans. I'm always checking out places like Weed Ats. I'm always checking out places like Thousand Figs. For anybody that's coming in from Detroit to see the game, you want to order something from your hotel room, DoorDash is the way to go, especially if you haven't used it before because Matt and I are going to do you a big old favor here. You're going to get 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first DoorDash order. When you download the DoorDash app and use the promo code LOCKED2323, use the digit, subject to change, terms apply. 
That's 50% off up to a $10 value when you spend $15 or more on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and use that promo code LOCK23. Terms apply subject to change. Go and check them out today, DoorDash. Today's episode of Locked Today is also brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook is the number one sportsbook in all of America and, of course, our uh, fantastic partners here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Looking at the uh, Saints and Lions line, hasn't moved at all so far. The Lions favored four and a half points coming into this game. That's what it opened as as well. So maybe you like the Lions in that matchup. Maybe you think the New Orleans Saints can kind of keep it a little bit tighter, maybe a three-point win or three-point loss, or maybe you think they're going to come in and upset as a whole. FanDuel is the place to get in on all of that. And if you're a new customer, you're going to be able to get a $150 worth of bonus bets by winning any $5 money line bet. So you can pick a heavy favorite like the Detroit Lions. If you get that right, $150 in bonus bets directly to you if your team wins. That's then bonus bets on 30 to 1 odds that you can use for spreads, player props, over-unders, and much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on today. It's FanDuel.com slash locked on today to get that started. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, everybody, wrapping up this episode of Locked on Lions and Locked on Saints, our crossover Thursday edition. We appreciate you very much for being here with us and making us your first listen of the day every day to all you everydayers out there. Matt, as we wrap this up, what is something that the Detroit Lions absolutely need to do to win this game against New Orleans? N-O-T, but turn the ball over. Do there not, you go. not turn the ball. I mean, this last couple of weeks has been, you know, the one thing through the first nine or 10 games has been, man, Jared Goff, ball security. It hasn't been the Goff of old. He's been so good. Ben Johnson, the offensive coordinator, put him in a, uh, some good positions. There have been some bad throws. The Raider game on Monday night, cross his body with the pick six. Mm-hmm. But the last three weeks, you're ta- or two games, you're talking about six turnovers for Goff, fumbles, some picks. Going on the road, the last thing you want to do is, is, is get a team that needs a home win badly, like the Saints, a uh, short field. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, free free opportunities in the red zone. So the Lions have got to not turn the ball over. I mean, that's to me that the biggest issue for uh, for them right now has been turnover margin. Uh, minus five for the season. Remember last year when they made that great run, they were plus 12 second half of the year for a plus seven on the year and nearly made the playoffs. Uh, minus five this year isn't going to cut it. They're not getting enough turnovers. A lot of that with the injuries, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, James Houston, Emmanuel Mosley being out most of the year. Um, but I look at the offensive side and just not turning it over. What about uh, what about New Orleans? Yeah, um, I, I want to say real quick, um, Coach yeah. Johnson, by the way, apple of every New Orleans Saints fan's eye right now. Oh, yeah? If, oh, that's yeah. They, if, that's who they want? That's who, that's who a lot of Saints <laughs> fans want. And understandably so. I mean, he's got a great system. He does a lot of really good things. I'd, I'd be on the side of that, too, if the Saints were to open up their head coaching search. But just, just so you know, that that's a lot of Saints fans are watching this game going, What's Coach Johnson doing well, over there with the uh, with the Detroit Lions? Any 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 words on that? Any well, he had that? an audition. I thought in L.A. against the Chargers a few weeks ago because I said yes. Oh they yeah. Fired, uh, uh, Staley, Kellen Moore is waiting in the wings. But what if Ben Johnson puts on a show and he did? They scored forty one points. Right. I also tell you he's a he's a North Carolina guy. He turned the Panthers down last mm. year. I mm-hmm. don't see him. If David Tepper calls again, I think he's red buttoning him. I don't think he's. Don't think he's <laughs> <laughs> oh, not this guy again. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't Pepper won a bad last year and he took his name out of the running and everybody went, what's he doing? He does the head coaching job and now he's going smart move, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, we'll see. Maybe he gets a little bit of an opportunity to audition here in front of, uh, in front of the New Orleans Saints. That's a we'll good see. point. See how that works out. Um, I look, I, I think for the Saints, it's, it's, it's the opposite of that, right? You have to force the turnovers. I, I think that that's the only way that the New Orleans Saints stay in this game at all is if they force turnovers. Plus six turnover margins so far this season, 20 turnovers forced, big time flip from where they were last year. Uh, they've been outstanding there. A uh, couple players with multiple interceptions, but also a bunch of players with one interception. They've done a good job at punching footballs out, you know, causing those fumbles, creating contact fumbles at the quarterback when they get there things like that. I think that's the thing that they have to do in this game. The Saints are 5-0 uh, and oh so far. All five of their wins are, are games in which they scored points off of turnovers. They're 6-0, and oh, and all six of their losses in games where they either force turnovers and don't score off of them, or don't force turnovers, which is only one game, and that was against the, um, that was against the Minnesota Vikings. 
And so I, that's just kind of like a key to victory for them, you know, for lack of a better phrase. And that's very like, that's very cliche phrasing, but it, it's, it's, it's what works for the New Orleans Saints. They have to turn the ball over. They have to force, like take the ball away. And then the offense has to turn around and score points, score touchdowns, preferably uh, to be able to do that. And, you know, last week was a week in which they forced two turnovers and they got some points off those turnovers. Well, uh, actually, no, they didn't. And they got no points off those turnovers. They lost that game. Uh, and then they didn't score any touchdowns all game either. That's not a good formula at all. So I think that's got to be the big thing for them is, you know, force those turnovers and then be able to cash in on the opposite side. Hold on. I got to lob you a softball, though. What's your second one? Oh, my <laughs> second one. Oh, yeah. My second one is, uh, is, on is, is pray, um, <laughs> burn some sage, uh, revive. That's a new one. That's Revive. a new one for a graphic. I don't think I've yeah. ever seen a graphic on this network that says turnovers and burning stage. But those of you watching on our YouTube channels, oh, that's awesome. I that's love That's what it. you got to do, man. You got you to force <laughs> those turnovers. You got to burn some sage. If you can revive Marie Laveau or Marie Laveau's lineage is still out there, they want to come through and bless the stadium. Come through, bless the stadium. Like, I'll bring you on the show and you can do it. Like, oh somebody, my gosh. somebody, somebody's got to do something. They need like Ricky Williams to run out in that 34 jersey, like pregame and like wave a, wave a towel or something and get everybody fired up. Is Ricky yeah. Jackson around or Vaughn Dunbar? Yeah, Rick, Ricky people? Jackson would work. Ricky Williams can come out and wave something, but it ain't going to be a towel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Drew, he's not Drew burning Brees. sage either you know Drew Brees uh, do like the fire up uh arms or something I mean, yeah they gotta know. get somebody get so i'll be curious to see who it is that they have go out there and do the who that chant because oh, usually yeah. because every now and then they'll have somebody come out and do it that's you know a legend or something like that um or sometimes they have somebody come out and do it that's on, on the roster but they, they ain't got nobody left on the roster everybody's hurt so I, I don't know who it is that they would that they'll have go out. Maybe Tyron, maybe Tyron Matthew goes out there and does it. Hometown guy, get everybody wrapped up. But we'll see. We'll, see. <laughs> well, um, Pelicans coach Willie Green, you could have uh -huh. out there, but he's a Lions. Fan. He's a oh Detroit. well, that's not going to work out. So that's not going to work out. Might, Stay inside, might, Willie. Yeah, he, Willie's the man. He's a great dude. But uh, stay but, over at the Smoothie King Center, man. <laughs> uh, I also, you know, I, I do see the Lions winning this game. I, you know. Yeah. We're going to get into the prediction thing. I, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I just, I think they bounce back. I do. The thing that does scare me though, I mentioned before is Camara versus Campbell mm -hmm. and, and also the Taysom Hill factor. I do think if the saints were smart, uh, they would really, really up that package and see what the bear watch some of that film from two weeks ago. when Justin Fields basically was playing, playing backyard football, hike yeah. and run. And it was working. So that could be something that hurts the lions, but I do think Detroit, they know how poorly they looked this past Thursday. They had the extra time off, and I don't think Dan Campbell wants to go back to New Orleans and embarrass himself. So. Yeah, yeah. This is a this is a game that from the schedule release I, I looked at and said, okay, that's that's a loss for New Orleans. It's going to be interesting. It, I think it's going to be closer, hopefully, uh, than than maybe you might expect. But look, I, I think a lot of Saints fans are going to walk away from this and either feel really good about the New Orleans Saints getting this big upset against the Detroit Lions, or they're going to walk away going, well, that was about what everyone expected it that it was going to be this won't be a heartbreaking loss uh for the new orleans saints or for the new orleans saints fan base i imagine and even with a loss i think the new orleans saints fan base would get a kick out of a big time loss by the hands of ben johnson like i, I do think that, that that will be such a big such a big part of it so um so i yeah i i take the lions in this one for sure i'd be i'd be crazy not to uh but it'll be interesting to see if the new orleans saints can get it right even if they're losing, right? Utilizing Alvin Kamara, utilizing Taysom Hill the way that they should. They've had some trouble making the right decisions in those cases. We'll see if they can at least show some step forward in terms of that progress. But yeah, it's good. It would take a lot, take a lot of stage uh, and whatever <laughs> Rick and whatever Ricky's got left uh, to, to get a win here. Uh, by, the New Orleans Saints. by the way, who's kicking for you guys Sunday? We'll see. It should be Blake Groupie or it might be Blake Groupie, but he's dealing with an injury right now. So you might see an old face and an old friend. Uh, of course, in yeah. uh, Austin Seibert, uh, who once was reverse iced by Matt LaFleur. Uh, <laughs> That's right. So it might be him out there. We'll see uh, See how the uh, injury report continues to roll throughout the week. So. Ross, it was great to see you, brother. Real pleasure, buddy. Real pleasure. I we, we, uh, it's always a pleasure to get to chop it up with you, and it's always a pleasure to get to do another one of these crossover Thursdays for you, our everydayers, our love and our support. Like Everything that we felt from y'all has been excellent and amazing. So thank you very, very much for being here. 
for another episode of Locked On Lions and another episode of Locked On Saints here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.